Recently, somebody said to me, I'm massively enthusiastic about the research that I do. I'm really, really keen on it, but I'm not making progress. Um, what's wrong? Surely enthusiasm for this should be enough to drive me forward, to make me successful, etc. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you think that enthusiasm on its own is the way to become a great researcher. I'm afraid that that's just not true. It's just not the case. It's just not how these things work at all. Enthusiasm, it's fantastic. It's a great thing to start you off. You get into whatever research you're doing because you're enthusiastic about it. You want to change the world. You want to develop skills. You want the lifestyle that you feel that researchers have. And believe me, a lot of what we do is fantastic. And it's it fills me full of enthusiasm. I have no doubt whatsoever that enthusiasm is such an important part that pl to play uh, in what we do. However, it's simply not enough. It simply doesn't get you all of the results that you want. There are three things that any day of the week beat the socks off of enthusiasm. And I want to tell you about those three things in this video. First up, Let's just talk a little bit about research and about what we do. One of the main things that you'll discover over time is that rejection, failure and disappointment are all key parts of what we all experience every day, every month, every year. You send a paper to a journal to be published, they reject it. You send your best grant proposal to a funding agency, they reject it. You apply to graduate school, you're rejected. You look for promotion, you're rejected. It happens all the time. Now, I think if it happens so much that it, you never had successes, that that would be really, really, really difficult. But on average, people have some successes and some failures. But the issue here is resilience. How resilient are you when those difficult days happen? How resilient are you when that crucial experiment didn't work? How resilient are you when a journal or a grant agency or whoever sends you that email that you don't want to get? Now, resilience isn't avoiding failure. Not at all. It's not at all. That's not what resilience is. Resilience is what happens when you get rejection, when you get failure, when something doesn't work. How do you pick yourself up? How much can you bounce back from that? It's not talked about very much. It's certainly not something that, you know, gets written into the advertising that you have for a job or for a research position and so on, that they want somebody that's resilient when the bad days come because nobody wants to say that bad days will come. But believe me, bad days do come and they come quite often. Particularly if you're trying really, really hard, if you're trying at the very, very leading edge of something, then those failures, rejections, etc., they might come thick and fast. So while you have enthusiasm that takes you into research, one of the key things that will mean that you can stay going is your ability to be resilient when bad days come. So that's key point number one to a great research career, just being resilient when those terrible days turn up and try to rain on your parade. The second point I want to make is about consistency and discipline. And, you know, they're not going to make any Hollywood movies where there's consistency and discipline built into that movie. Well, maybe the Rocky films. Okay. For me, discipline is incredibly important. I'm sitting here on my red swivel chair. This is my chair where I come to work. When I'm sitting here, I know I'm in work mode. I know that I'm not going to do anything else for quite a while because I'm sitting in this chair. This is one of the things that helps me to focus and helps me to have self-discipline. There's a way of working that's attributed to Jerry Seinfeld. It's called the chain method. And Jerry Seinfeld is this American comedian who over decades produced hit show after hit show after hit show comedy shows. And somebody said to him one time, how do you do that? How do you produce all of this? And he said it was discipline. 
that he sets aside time every day to write, no matter what, this is going to happen, no matter what else is going on, this is going to happen. And then you tick off, maybe on a calendar on the wall, that you did that thing, that bite of work. You did it every day. And then tomorrow you did it again. And then the next day, and that's three days in a row. You don't want to break that chain. You want to go for four, so you do four. How about five? You do five. And then you come next week and you do another chain. And then the week after, and you don't want to break that chain. And you keep saying to yourself, don't break the chain. And it doesn't matter what it is. Just don't break the chain. Make sure that the piece of work is small enough that you can have it done in a day. And you can say, I successfully did that. Whether it's writing, whether it's data analysis, whether it's preparation for something, whatever it is, don't break the chain. Be disciplined. And then you'll be shocked at how far you've come in six months. But if you remember that discipline beats enthusiasm every day, consistency beats enthusiasm, figure out what for you discipline means, how you can achieve discipline. Figure out what the best way for you to achieve discipline is and consistency. If you do that, then I guarantee you that you're well on your way to being a great researcher. The last of my three is, of course, sounding a little bit like it comes from the self-help literature, and indeed it does, and it's growth mindset. And so I could paint the picture of two kinds of researchers. One who's so convinced that whatever they're doing and how they're doing it is the best, that they close down and it doesn't matter how many rejections and they tell themselves, I am resilient, I am going to beat these rejections and I am consistent and I'm doing all of the things every day. But if you don't have a growth mindset, if you figure that you've grown enough, that there's nowhere left to grow, that you're not going to learn on a daily basis from that consistency, from rejection, you can learn lots from rejection. Don't delete those emails the minute you get the rejection letter. Learn from those. This growth mindset of continuously growing and looking for growth and seeing every failure or success as an opportunity to figure out something new and to ask yourself, what did that teach me? What did that event that I did today? What did that moment of sitting down to write? What did they teach to me? And that if you're continuously available for growth in your head, available to grow, then I guarantee you, once again, you will be doing fantastic research, certainly in the long term. I'll summarize this video by saying that your research career is long. Enthusiasm is short. It's kind of like a flame. It burns, if it burns brightly, and it's not fed, it extinguishes after a while. That's what happens to enthusiasm. You've got to tend the flame. You've got to make sure that it gets the kind of nourishment that it needs. Your enthusiasm is important, but it's not sufficient on its own. If you have resilience, if you have consistency, and if you have a growth mindset, they will feed that flame of enthusiasm. And I guarantee you, that's a better way of thinking about your research career than just thinking about enthusiasm will take me there. I guarantee you, on its own, it simply won't. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's useful to you. Please like and subscribe.